Hi, I'm Steve Bowden. I'm one of the startup advisors at Newcastle University. The startup team is here to help all Newcastle University students and recent graduates who want to work for themselves. We often have inquiries from students and graduates who are looking to combine working for an employer with running their own business. So from side hustles to spreading your risk across multiple employers and combining employment with self-employment, as we explain in our Future of Work video, the world of work is changing. And in today's video, we're going to hear from a Newcastle University graduate, Jed Buttress, about how those changes have impacted him and what it is to have a portfolio career. The following are excerpts from a conversation that Jed and I had over Zoom, so apologies for the picture and sound quality, but hopefully what we discuss and Jed's insight into the future of work will answer some of the questions you might have when thinking about your own career. And for all those questions that you still have, we have a workshop about portfolio careers, and I'll leave a link for that in the description below. I studied fine arts at Newcastle, graduated, I think two years ago. And yeah, since then I've continued my career as an artist. I have just under a year ago secured employment at the Newcastle Arts Centre. Um, and at right about the same time last year, like you said, I launched a business, which is a shop that sells art.com, which does what it says in the tin. Collect artists, well, different artworks from different artists around um, Europe. Um, and we sort of store it, package it, sell it online. Um, makes it a lot easier for artists to sell work. Yeah, what it basically means is um, I can use all the skills I've developed whilst at uni um, in a career of my own choosing. Uh, I guess it's a nice way of saying you're doing pretty much what you want to do. Um, and it means that no two days are the same, which is one of many cliches, I think, that I'm going to have to end up listing. But it definitely does mean that um, you, even in like the employment that I have, but mostly in the freelance stuff, um, it's very difficult to get bored of what you're doing. And if you do, for whatever reason, get bored, um, like for example, in my case, if I'm making too much kind of work or I'm a bit sick of sculpting, I can devote some of my time towards the business or the employment. It basically means you can kind of occupy your time how you choose a bit more than you might otherwise. I think some of the choices you make, you trick yourself into thinking they're by design, definitely. But um, yeah, I think a lot of it might actually just be indecision. I mean, if you've got quite a lot of different things going on, like um, you have a business idea, but you've also got your own freelance practice, but maybe you've got an idea for a shop that you want to run or something. Um, it sort of, I think I was relying on one of them to kind of take steps forward. Um, and rather than me having to decide what I wanted to do and design the next like 10 years of my career, I was kind of hoping that it would pretty much work out for me. Um, but as it turns out, um, I'm pretty much still juggling all these different kind of balls and it kind of um, ended up being a case of I'm doing it all a lot more than I was before. Um, it's kind of, yeah. In terms of knowing what I'm going to be doing like next month, because everything mostly is based on commissions, like you said earlier. Um, as a result of that, a lot of the time, I don't really know what I'm doing um, two months from now, but um, which is both exciting, but also, like you said, definitely means it's quite hard to design what you think your time is going to be spent doing as. And, um, but it's fun. It's just, um, yeah, one of the things you kind of have to get used to pretty quickly. So like I said, my career based into break into the three different things. You've got the employment, there's the artist side of things, and there's the business. Um, there's definitely been times when one of those three things has suffered because the other, like another one is doing quite well. And for example, with my shop, things only um, 
there's, there's things that I launched a business pretty much a month before lockdown happened. And I think uh, anyone who's in that position kind of can understand uh, how unlucky that can be. But I think at the same time, the business could have flourished a lot more in those early months. Um, if I wasn't so busy with the artist kind of stuff I was doing. So um, it is kind of interesting. One of the things I've noticed happening is, you know, if one aspect of your career is doing well, it just means that the other two might end up suffering. And um, it's kind of ironic, but it is definitely how it has been for the past year and a half. I think, I think it's mostly a positive, yeah. I mean, um, if I was riding solely on a shop that sells art, uh, I pretty much set myself up to be financially dependent on this one business plan. Then within a month, I'd be like pretty much on the ground, I think. If it wasn't for commissions that I had lined up, and if it wasn't for my employment, um, acting as pretty much safety nets, then I think um, that would be a much different story. But because I had different things on the go, uh, I was really lucky. And I think it's definitely a positive, even though things do um, kind of fluctuate wildly. Uh, if you, you have more than one thing happening in your life and more than one source of income, it feels like less of a nose dive if one of them isn't doing particularly well at a certain point in time. One of them quite childishly is uh, you constantly get told that most businesses that are launched don't make a profit for the first three years. And I just keep telling myself that every day. But uh, another one is um, a lot of the artists who uh, you know, are attached to the shop and whose paintings and prints and drawings that I sell um, are close friends and are business partners of mine. And it's um, even though the business as a whole is kind of breaking even, um, I take a very low commission and that's for the reason isn't financially the best uh, source of income for myself. It is making money for the artists. So it's not like um, <laughs> we're making an overall loss every year. It's a really cheap business to run in terms of all I need is a website. You know, I, I do the storage and the packaging and I do all of the web hosting and design and things myself. So I'm not forking out loads of money for someone to design a new font for me every week. But um, I think a big motivator is honestly, um, it does feel real to be able to send you know, money to a friend of mine who's just for a painting. And beyond that, yeah, it's a cool kind of exciting thing to do. It's definitely to be able to not only help out other art students who are otherwise unable to sell artwork, but also to be able to um, one day eventually uh, sell enough work to make money for myself. Um, I don't think it's, it's not hard to kind of convince yourself to do it when it's kind of, you know, it's so easy to do. Sometimes there'll be jobs that come along which don't make a lot of money, but they're an opportunity to maybe learn something new. So um, with the shop, it, it is pretty much a learning exercise of, you know, can I learn how to make a website that sells things? Um, can I figure out how to sell artwork to people? Because whether or not it's my artwork or not, at some point as an artist, I'm going to need to be able to sell artwork to people. And it's very easy practice when you're using your friend's work. Um, what I kind of tell myself it is, um, is if I'm designing a job, you know, let's say a friend of mine wants a logo done for their band, um, or like they want like, uh, some t-shirt design cause they're starting a fashion company, or I want to start an art shop online. It might not be the most like financially viable thing and it does involve a lot of learning, but the only other way to learn those skills is to pay for tuition. So if someone's paying me to do something that I don't yet need to do. All that is, is a bit of money to cover the cost of learning a new skill. And I think there definitely, definitely are risks of, um, of most of the things that you'll find yourself doing in a portfolio career. I was looking at the overall turnover for the shop this year, and not including the money that goes up to the artists. For the business itself, there was an overall loss for the first year, which, um, but when I, Compare that to, you know, overalls and everything. Um, it's not a big enough loss to like financially ruin me or anything like that. And I just think if you've got enough, you know, things on the go, you've got a portfolio career, you've maybe got freelance stuff on, on one side as well. 
um, you can take those risks. If you think like, you know, if you've got enough of a safety net financially, you've got like, in my case, it's the employment from Newcastle Arts Centre. If you've got money coming in, then now is really the best time to make sort of risks and try to set up businesses that might not necessarily work out for the first few years because the worst that can happen is you have to fill out a potentially embarrassing tax return. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's, it's a lot of work, but you're teaching yourself. Figure out, you know, who's around you, what your network is, um, and see what you can bleed them dry for. Um, a lot of people, especially in the kind of business world that I'm in, will always say it's not what you know, it's who you know. But that is often used as an excuse to not really, you know, push yourself forward. Um, if you feel like you're not from a background, that's going to get you into where you need to be. But if you can use the phrase, "what it's not what you know, it's who you know, as a sort of drive to get to know people and see what they can do for you, um, I would do so. And I would say 99% of the commissions I've been given is because um, it's came from working hard and being nice to people, which again is the next cliche, but it's, that everyone would rather kind of work with someone who isn't necessarily the best in their field um, if they know that they're going to be easier to work with. In my case, if I'm doing a logo for someone, it might not be best first time, but they know that they can come back to me confidently and say, can you change this? Can you change that without hurting any feelings? So mm -hmm. I would definitely try to maintain as much of a kind of positive, but like personable attitude because every job I've gotten has came from a person. And that's the same for everyone. Like you're gonna have to rely on each other now more than ever. But um, if you can be the person that someone thinks of when they think, oh, I need a logo given, or, or I need, you know, a piece of jewelry, or, you know, I need a Valentine's gift, whatever it is your field is in. If you're the first person that someone thinks of, then you've already got the job. We continue exploring the concept of having a portfolio career in our portfolio careers workshop. The link is in the description below. That workshop will give you the opportunity to ask questions that you have based on what you've seen in this video. The workshop's interactive, so we'll do some work with you on your strengths and your preferences, so you can better judge whether portfolio working is something that is right for you. In the meantime, you can find out information about all of our support, services, and resources on the Career Service website, or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or you can contact us via My Career. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you get started.